Oh, Nita, and you've been on my mind all day with that song. Um, let it take this heart and lead me to love. That what's the name of that? Light the way for me. Without your touch, I cannot see. Lead me to love. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Anyway, y'all remember we talked about Carlos DeLarge. Not DeBarge. Not Robert DeBarge. But Robert DeLarge. Oh, my dogs are out there acting a dang on donkey. Y'all remember, right? Robert DeLarge. But who... Who the heck is Andrew Dumfries? How many of y'all know Andrew Dumfries? Oh, my God. This is what I mean when I say black people fought on the side of the North and the South, died in every war that y'all have had. They even fought against their own damn self when you wouldn't even allow us to even be buried in the same cemetery with you. But we sit there, and that's why I said, who is the real American? Why should I give up? my citizenship i'm the real american we died and fought for real for this country and our blood is soaked in the soil of this country and for anybody to think that we less american i think you should claim it yeah too many people that died under this flag for senseless shit, swinging from trees burnt to the crisp all of that under that american flag I'm telling you, my people from Kosciuszko, Mississippi, my people are from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, and Cape Girada, um, and St. Louis, um, and y'all know Mississippi was hard. Mississippi was real hard. I come from that. But I can tell you about Andrew Dumford, a Louisiana plantation he had owner, which he worked with some 75 slaves. And they was it was a, one day a finely tuned planter, ideally uh, ideology, and considered himself a periarchal master in the best tradition of the Southern master. Okay? He was a finely tuned planter. Although Dumford railed endlessly against the seemingly incompetent laziness and ignorance of his Negroes, he took pride in playing the role of their master and protector. When Robert Rillo, a French trained free black engineer who had invented a new method of refining sugar, offered Dumford $50,000 for the use of his plantation to test the process. Now, that was a lot of money back then, right? The planter turned him down, noting that he could not give up control of his black people. Dumford's people, of course, were his slaves, and he treated them as such, even though he had the same skin color as them. With the rare exception of his personal black bodyguard, he never showed any interest in releasing any of his people from bondage. As early as 1680, laws had been passed prohibiting blacks from having white indentured servants, but until the late 1840s, there were no prohibition, prohibit, prohibitions, prohibitions, y'all know what I'm trying to say, my mouth can't do it, of blacks owning <laughs> other blacks as slaves. Consequently, in 1835, Dunford traveled north to Virginia to purchase additional hands for himself and his white friend and mentor, John Dono. During his trip, he confronted, perhaps for the first time, the southern distaste for black slave traders, as opposed to blacks who bought slaves for their own use, and he consciously manipulated the distaste 
to obtain slaves at lower prices. Yet, throughout a lengthy discussion with McDonald on what Dunford called Negro traders, he showed not the slightest understanding that the term applied to him. He was like Bigsby. He was like the dude sitting on the porch. What was his name? Oh, Clarence. Clarence Bigsby. Um, uh, uh, Dave Chappelle. He didn't have the slightest understanding why they hated him and applied to him that he was doing to his own people was treasonable. These possibilities were lost on him because he fully identified with the white slave owning elite. Many wealthy free blacks like Dumford considered themselves more white than black. So no matter their actual racial heritage, they thought they were white. Well, they considered themselves white. They showed little sympathy for slaves and had few qualms about the morality of slavery. Dumford's northern educated son had no greater sense of identification with blacks than his father did. He supported some um, amelioration of slave conditions, but not their emancipation. Like father, like son. As slaveholders, they believed in slavery, but were willing to accept the plan to return blacks to Africa, the land of their fathers, if the government was willing to pay to repay them the money that they had invested in their black slaves. Now, they should have sent their black asses uh, to Africa, basically. They asses should have went. They should have went. I'm sorry. Excuse my language. If they wanted to send black, other black people back to Africa, you know they should have went. Oh, my God. If that's not silly, if that's not a silly story, I don't know what it is. Y'all, tell me what y'all think. I, I gotta know. Tell me about Andrew Dunford. Had y'all ever heard this story before? Who lived in Louisiana and he was a plant, uh, um, uh, 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 a planter. Well, of course, they all were, pretty much. But he was a fine-tuned uh, planter. And he considered himself an elite. Who y'all know today? With that same mindset. Leave your comments below. Tell me what y'all think about this guy. I'll be back with another video.